So you have to, they, they call it grandfather. They, it's like they don't take away the benefits. You still have them. But if you want the new one, you could do it. Well, with domains, with, with functions itself, you have to find out that these are, these functions, this is where we're kind of left off. We're going to add these functions. The grandfather clause that, that pertains with this is that whatever domain and range, particularly domain in our case, that these functions have, they're going to transfer over to the new one that gets created. Because in, in essence, I'm going to be adding these two. So in essence, since I'm adding these two, I'm creating a new function. So the old stuff still carries forward. Now with these, if I ask you what the domain is on these, everybody should be able to tell me, you know what, the domain's all real numbers. And why? It's all real numbers just for a particular reason. Let me write that down. Domain is going to be all real numbers. Now this is a symbol for all real numbers. Now this is a shorthand version to write it. And the reason being is that uh, if I did the longhand version, I would have to use like set notation and then say x is an element of all real numbers. The biggest thing you want to make sure you understand about this is the idea that whatever is there is going to show up at the end. Now, um, there is one basic reason that this is all real numbers. Is there a way for this denominator, and let me state what it is. Is there any possible way to change this denominator from not being one? It's fair to be zero for some reason. No, no, it cannot. And because of that, there's, there's, since there's no way, that's the reason why it's all real numbers. There's no restriction. There's no violation. If for whatever reason there was zero down here, like, and that normally occurs if there's a variable, then you would have. So since there's no way to make that happen, then we, we don't worry about it. Now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and talk about what is it that uh, we're going to do here. Okay, We're going to go ahead and now add them. And one of the first things, um, I'm going to have you rewrite this just because I want you all to start remembering that if you add, if you ever see this symbolage, which is uh, f plus g of x, it really means f of x plus g of x, which means, in essence, that I'm going to take the functions and just add them. Now, this is where combining like terms, the quiz you all took yesterday, becomes important. Because if I do 3x minus 4 and then add x squared plus 2x minus 3, it's very important to get a right answer to know what goes in together, what belongs. So when I combine like terms, what I'm going to end up with, okay, there's nothing like an x squared here. So I'm just going to write down x squared. But this is, these are alike, so that's going to produce a 5x. And then these constants are alike, so that's going to produce a minus 7. So all you have to do at the end is just say f plus g of x, and then state that the domain is all real numbers. So we have this, and then we also have this. That, um, because even my new function has the same qualities as the ones above, where you don't have a change. You don't have something that is making it for it to produce an error. And that's pretty much the answer. Now, um, I, I will move over to subtraction. Well, let me, let, I'm going to let everybody finish writing this down. The subtraction is um, it's actually very similar to the quiz one. And the reason being is that um, you have really now a minus to this latter part. You see the, the, the section over here on the right side? So let's go ahead and produce that. We're not going to do the same equation, but now do a subtraction with it, which means that you don't need to rewrite everything down. But what I do need you to write is that you, you will do now do the difference. So write down difference. You could state it with DIFF if you want to do that. Um, but, and I also want you to write down what the function looks like. F minus G of X, like this. You could write this down. And state that it equals F of X minus G of X. In essence, that's going to be the beginning part for you to start memorizing this. Now, I'm going to do pretty much the same setup as the one before, except for one very important difference. The important difference falls in here. We have 3x minus 4 minus, now I'm putting parentheses, 
because when I'm subtract, I'm I'm in tasks to subtract the whole function, which means that every element that's in there, every term that's in there, is going to be applied with the negative. That's why yesterday's quiz, you had to make sure that if the most common mistake I saw is that most people will only subtract the first term. You got to make sure that every term that's in there is subtracted. It's accounted for. So what's going to produce is slightly different answer. Our solution is going to be now, well, 3x minus 4. Let me write down the terms minus x squared minus 2x plus 3. We will do the uh, same thing as before, which is to go ahead and, and write down the simplified version of it. So we combine like terms. Now in this case, I'll have a negative x squared. The x's are going to be alike, so I'll be left with a plus x. And then these are the same, so then I'll be left with a minus 1. And the only thing that is left for me to do is still state the domain, which is the same thing as all the other ones because there has really been no, no big alter change. There's no, there's no variable in the, as a denominator. All right, good. Now, copy on. Let me This one rings. To, this is fifth period, right? Okay. All right. Let me go ahead and put down the right alarm. Okay. Now let's. Um, let me go ahead and now let's move on to now a uh, multiplication one. So multiplication one will be won't be uh, very difficult, other than the fact that's the reason on the quiz too. It's important that you know how to factor. Okay. Remember on your notes, just write down product because you already know the equations. We're going to use the same equations throughout. And also go ahead and write down this important notation you got to start memorizing. F times G of X is equal to F of X times G of X. So in instance, we're going to multiply a binomial with a trinomial. That was one of the quiz ones too. So other than the fact that on the quiz, we just multiply two binomials together. Now, it's very similar. Other than the fact that we're going to need, uh, we have 3x minus 4, and then we also have x squared plus 2x minus 3, which means that when I do my multiplication, the only thing that's slightly different is that I have to multiply to all three terms. So here, here, and here. So when I do this, I'll end up with 3x cubed, actually, no, don't write the parentheses, it's not necessary for me here. But I'll end up with 3x cubed, and then plus 6x squared, minus 9x. So that's the first set of turns out. That will be produced from the, just using that uh, one inner term multiplying with the other term. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and do the next part of it, which is using the next to the negative 4 and distributing that throughout. So now this negative 4 is going to multiply there, which will give me negative 4x squared. This negative 4 is going to multiply here, which is going to give me negative 8x. And negative 4 times negative 3 gives me a positive 12. So I have this answer. And then what I'll do is that I'll have the opportunity to simplify. So. We will self-discover that f times g of x, now this is the only, there's no other x cubed. Now the x squares, there is two of them, so when I combine those, I'll get um, plus 2x squared. There is 2x's, negative 17x, and there is no constants, 12. The domain does not change as far as the fact that we're still stating that we're working with all real numbers. Now, I'm doing that throughout because it's it, it's one of the necessary things that 
we got to keep on stating. Now, our next one is one of the ones where a domain won't be all real numbers. And the reason being is that that's the last one that we're doing, which is a quotient, which is a division in essence. In essence, our very last one would be a division one. So let's go ahead and do the last one and then do a division one. Now, this is what we're going to do for this one. Um, write down quotient on your notes. And then write down this uh, formula, which is there, which is uh, F divided by G of X is equal to F of X divided by G of X. That's what I'm looking for you to do. Let's write that down. Now, most of you all are going to be able to look at that and then automatically think on what's on the right because it's going to be essential for you to be able to do that. Now, with this one, once I write down 3x minus 4 and divide it by this term x squared plus 2x minus 3, I will now need to simplify the denominator. And the reason being is because I know that some places in that denominator there's going to be a zero result. There's going to be times that that's going to equal zero. So I'm, I have a domain restriction. Now you might be looking at it and say, well, what should I do? Um, anytime you see a quadratic like that, you have to automatically think factoring. Okay, same thing as one of the questions on the quiz. Um, now, negative 3 is a prime number, so you're only dealing with 1 and 3 and 1. So it's only the two numbers that multiply to give you negative 3 to add up to 2, it's going to be positive 3 and negative 1, those two numbers. So I'll circle this pair. So when I write down the solution, I'll write down 3x minus 4. And at the bottom, I'll have x plus 3, x minus 1, and I've factored. Now, what power do I have from factoring? The power that I contain now is to be able to tell you is I have an, a solution for the domain. My domain now is now x. My domain is now x is all real numbers such that x cannot equal negative 3 or positive 1. Because if that occurs, I'll have a zero denominator. And we can't have that concept here. So, in essence, my answer is this. At the end, you will be writing this and this. Those two things. Those two items will be your answer for this one. Now, let's um, I'll have you all finish writing that down. And then we'll move into... Now, this is what we started with, was some, something sim uh, some simpler equations. We're going to take it up a notch and move it just a little bit more. Okay, we're going to move it a little bit more because um, you're going to be seeing things like this. Uh, let's see if everybody's still writing. Okay. We're going to be seeing equations like this. So we're now going to practice taking these equations and doing the same thing, adding, subtracting, uh, uh, finding the sum, difference, product, and quotient. Let's play. Now, let's, um, let's start with the sum of these. Because you're going to find out the sum. The sum and difference are going to be pretty much similar because you know they're opposite operations of each other. But write this down. Write down both equations. And then if, if you're able to, before I write it down myself, see if you can come up with the domain restrictions. Yeah, write down both, uh, both equations now. Hopefully when you wrote down both equations, you went ahead and uh, clearly stated the domain on this one could be x such that x does not equal negative 2. And then this one over here is domain is all real numbers x such that x cannot equal positive 1. All right. These, no matter what I do with these equations, those two values are kind of like grandfather values. They will show up all the way until the end. Okay, so you got to make sure they account. So even if they don't 
technically exist. Because sometimes some of these uh, denominators, the way you see them, disappear. They leave. You still need to write down the original restrictions. Now, let's, um, let's go ahead and do the uh, sum one first. The addition of these, which is annotated f plus g of x, is really going to be then f of x plus g of x. I'm just trying having you write it down as a memory practice, remembrance. And then a way to do this that leads into a substitution of it. So let's lead to the substitution of this one. This one, in essence, are going to be, we're going to add these fractions, 5x plus 2, and then I'm going to add x and x minus 1. Oh, hold on, that didn't, let's see how well that, Alright, now one of the things I want to make sure that um, before I actually start doing it algebraically, because this is this is I'm gonna, we're going to do it algebraically with the variables. I'm going to go ahead and take you back to the 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 same rules that when when you used to be younger and add fractions. Like if I ask you to add one third and one seventh, the same rules and the same techniques will apply. So if you ever get lost, like if you ever sitting there looking at fractions, you got to add them, and you're like wondering what do I do? Just think about something simpler like this. Now, how would I add these fractions? Yeah, find the common denominator, right? At least common. And in this case, uh, we would do something in particular. And and we would say, okay, you all see how the 7? We would take the 7 and say, okay, 7 and multiply by 7 on this side, and then we would do 3 and multiply by 3. And we would say, oh, I'm, I'm a, I could do that because these become 1, right? in essence, so it's right. We do the same thing here. We do the exact same thing. So you notice how this is not here. So just like the 7 was not existing and I had to place it here, the same thing with this x minus 1. Let me erase this here so I have a little bit of space. I'm going to multiply x minus 1 here and x minus 1 here. Just like I did up there on the on this number right side. And then on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and do x plus two and x plus two. And I hope I didn't blow anybody away, but in essence we're doing the same technique as I did as the regular fractions on the right. And where if I said is illegal, I would say yes, because I could go ahead and make all that one again. Now, why was this so important? Well, you know how we made a 21 here? And this was 7, and then this is 21, and this is 3? Okay, I can now combine both of those fractions and say, yeah, I have 21, 7 plus 3, that kind of idea. And I could do the same thing over here, too, as well. I could now say I got the same kind of denominator, so now I could do this. I could now say I have 5x minus 1, plus x, x plus 2, and say, oh, you know what, by the way, I now have a common denominator, like this. So I'm not doing anything new, I'm just doing old items. Uh, not yet, no, not canceling, and the reason being is that because we're going to simplify, the simplification, if, if after you simplify, you can find out you could cancel out, you would. But in our case, and what we're doing here, we're going to distribute. So we're going to distribute that first. So remember, we're going to 5x minus 5. And we're going to distribute this side over here. So after that, I'll have x squared plus 2x. And then from here, I'll just uh, combine like terms. I'll write my common denominator here, x minus 1, x plus 2. Mm -hmm. Well, not uh, well. After there's two terms up there that I could combine, so I would say that after you do that, that would be your final answer. This this term and this term could combine, and because of that, it becomes necessary for me to say my final answer is this. 
So the f plus g of x is going to be like this, uh, x squared plus 7x minus 5, and then x minus 1, x plus 2. And then you can say that this is your final answer. The only thing that is missing is domain. Now, with this one, it coincided that x still can't be 1 and negative 2. The reason I'm saying that is that at times, there's new ones that come up. There's a, there's a new one that all of a sudden just will pop up, and we, we have to be able to say, oh, yeah, you can't be this either. But not in this case. It's just 1 and negative 2. But that will be your final answer for adding. Now, subtracting will be pretty much the same thing. I don't want to get into it. I'll get into it if we have time. I'd rather take you through the other ones, which are important to know. But it follows pretty much the same thing except for subtracting. So if we have time, I'll come back to it. Oops, not there. Let me, um, so let me go ahead and do this one. And now let's do the, uh, let's do the product one. Actually, the product one is actually kind of easy. You know how it was to multiply fractions? Was multiplying fractions sometimes easier than adding them? Yeah. Well, you know what? The same thing goes here. Um, s multiplying fraction will be a little bit easier than would be to uh, add them or subtract them. So let's do now the multiply one. And what I want you to write in your paper is multiply. And then I, we're going to do this. I want you to write this down because I want you to start memorizing this part. F times g of x is f of x times g of x. Like this. So uh, the multiplication is going to be fairly quick. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and do that for you. Let me go ahead and multiply it. Uh, our first one was 5, 5 plus divided by 2x, x plus 2 times our x, okay, x and x minus 1. So we're going to multiply those two together. Now the nice thing about this one is that you know how typically we're looking for factors as a denominator? Well, this one already has them, so it's not necessary to foil the denominator. So all we really have to do is this, f of x, so really my answer f times g of x, it's 5x, x plus 2, x minus 1, with the statement of the domain saying that domain is a set x of all rhythms such that x cannot equal negative 2 or positive 1. So that's kind of what you want to... That's that's exactly what we need to have. We need to have say stating that. So this one is or this really all you have to do. We're done with this one. The one I really want to get to, the one that's very important, other than the adding and subtracting one, this other one is very important, which is the division one. So what I want to do now is uh, divide it for you. Okay, but for me, I want to make sure everybody's finished your first writing. Yeah. And once y'all are done writing, I could. I'll move on to the quotient one. And um, at first, it's going to look a little unusual. Okay, so now we're, let's do the quotient one. So we're going to do now, let's write down quotient. So on your notes, write down quotient. And then also write down the F divided by G the x on the outside, and what we're going to do is this, f of x and divided by g of x. Okay. Now with this one as well, well here, let me write it down. Now let me write down the functions before I I say anything about it. 5 divided by x plus 2 divided by x, x minus 1. 
Now, you're probably looking at this and you're saying, well, how do we do that? Can that be, even be simplified? And the answer is yes, it could be simplified. Um, but in order to make it easier for you, and, and, and if you ever get lost, again, um, use like smaller, use actual numbers. You, we're going to do the same exact strategy, just using like fractions. Like if I told you, take three halves and divide it with, um, say, uh, two cents. We're going to do the exact same strategy as dividing those two fractions. Now, if I ask you to divide those two fractions, what would you all tell me to do? You would, yeah, you would multiply the, the reciprocal of the denominator. All right, you would take the denominator and do the reciprocal. And what I mean by reciprocal, for y'all, it's intuitive to do this. And I'm glad y'all know. Y'all see what I just did right now? Y'all, do y'all remember that process of reciprocating the denominator? All right, I'm going to do the exact same thing with this over here, the exact same process. And we're now, in order to find out how to divide it, does everybody see that? That's the exact same thing. So if you ever lost, well, how do we do this? Think about just regular fractions. And you'll be able to now... Now we could go ahead and actually put it together. The nice thing is it becomes a multiplication, so it's easier to combine as far as to get a solution because then we're going to just have. Now I'm going to distribute this one, and I hope it, I don't move quickly for anybody, but I'm going to go ahead and write down 5x minus 5. And at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and write down x plus 2 and x like that. x plus 2 and x. Now that's pretty much my answer, except for I haven't put down the domain. Now this is where important, this, this actually, one like this actually clearly demonstrates the importance of understanding that we got to keep that, like a grandfather clause, we got to keep the original ones. Because if you notice, the x minus 1 is no longer there. Does everybody see that? And all the other ones we had x minus 1 except for this one. This one does not have the x minus 1. Which means that in my case, my domain is going to be set all real numbers x such that x cannot be negative 2, it can be 1, and if you notice, you see how the equation changed? There's a new one that gets added in. Does anybody know what the new one is? x can, cannot also be one other value. And it, hap and it has to be just, it's, it's simple. What value... No, what value in here? What value in here specifically? If I put a number in there, then when I multiply that number with this one, it's going to make zero. Zero. That's the other value that can no longer be. You need to take all your factors and set them equal to zero. So if you set x plus 2 equal to zero, you'll know the negative 2. If you set the x equal to zero, then it's zero. It cannot be zero. So those, those factors cannot, cannot also not be it. All right, excellent. Let's see. I think I put the alarm. This room is at 120, right? Okay. Yeah, let's do this. Go ahead and get out your pre-cal review and review on the back side of that, on the pre-cal review, on the back side of the bottom two, know how to do those because those, that's really what the quiz is going to be about. All right, so let me go ahead and pause this.